Welcome back to all of our Florida Powerboat Club YouTube viewers as we continue that exciting coverage of the Emerald Coast Powerboat Week 2020, which takes place every summer in the heart of the Florida Panhandle. The name of the place is Destin and Fort Walton Beach, and this indeed is a boater's paradise any time of the year because there are miles and miles of protected waters, sandy beaches, and great waterfront stops. This is Stu Jones, and we are going to join our Florida Powerboat Club members for this episode five with feature coverage of this exciting summer event. Florida Powerboat Club's 2020 series sponsors include Deep Impact Custom Boats and their associated brand, Blackwater Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Midnight Express Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Performance Boat Center, Mystic Power Boats, Superior Communications, and Mercury Racing Wide Open. In addition to our 2020 series sponsors, we were joined by these feature sponsors as seen here on our Emerald Coast Powerboat Week official banner, including Alocomp Insurance, Bent Marine, Emerald Grand and Harbor Walk Village, along with Glass Dream Powerboats. And as we now catch up with some of our club members, we are well into the Saturday Poker Run as we now look down on Scott and Monica James who are having fun in their brand new DCB 33 Cat powered by Mercury Racing 450Rs. I'm not exactly sure what part of the course they are on right now, but that may have been the Navarre Bridge, which would mean I believe they're heading back eastbound, which means they've already done their checkpoints down at the west end of the course. It is, in fact, a 120-mile course that spans from Sandestin all the way to Pensacola Beach, and you'll notice that these nice calm waters, that's what makes it so attractive for these outboard catamarans. You know, they're sit-down boats and you want to have nice calm waters so you can throttle up and go fast. And that's exactly why they're enjoying this boat. And with the popularity of the new Mercury Racing 450R, I think you're going to continue to see so many of the manufacturers that are getting into this class of boat, as well as the center consoles. And I just love this new camera angle as uh, we've got a mounted GoPro on the tail section of this Timberview R44 helicopter. It uh, gives us a neat shot for setup and you can see with the wide angles, you know, everyone is really spaced out on this event now. And I don't mean in any kind of a mind altering way. <laughs> I'm talking about the spacing in the course because depending on what time you started in the morning and depending on how many checkpoints you actually hit and which ones you stopped at, if, uh, you know, we have five lunch stops. So really what it does is it spreads all of the boats out over the course, and that's why these two cigarette center consoles have just kind of stuck together. Uh, they're both from Georgia. That's uh, Josh Kirkland on the left and his Huntress, and Mike and Susan Pascal on the right and their brand-new 41-foot Nighthawk. It's another cigarette center console, and they're just cruising along having a great time today. And, of course, we're going to move in and get a closer look at both of these boats. To many viewers, they may look identical in a lot of ways, uh, but Cigarette Racing Team out of Miami have really made a lot of changes and introduced a lot of new models in their center console lineup. Uh, this one right here in the foreground represents that brand new model, the Nighthawk that came out at the Miami Boat Show earlier this year. Mike and Susan Pascal were one of the first to receive one, powered by Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs, and in a very, very sexy paint job that matches the 42 cigarette that they own for the last two or three years. It was powered by Mercury Racing 860s, but the center console seems to be more suited to their boating lifestyle. They haven't got a really big crew on board today, but they have a lot of boating friends. And you can be certain that when they're cruising around on Lake Lanier, they could easily have a dozen passengers on board. And now we move over to this big 42 cigarette huntress, Josh and Colleen Kirkland, also from Georgia, and of course, good friends with Mike and Susan. He's got a bigger crew on board, and uh, this is a big stout platform. It's got a huge cabin down below. It's powered by Quad Mercury 350 Verados. Not as much power, so it won't be quite as fast as that Nighthawk, but you can see they've got all their friends on board, and Josh has some big friends, trust me. He's got some 300-pounders, the kind of guys you want to have around in case you get in trouble in a bar. And a lot of pretty ladies. Uh, here's a team that loves to have fun, and we love having them on board here at the Emerald Coast. And keeping in stride with the popularity of these new center consoles, well, of course, Nortec has been leading the charge there. The 34 model, one of their most popular, as we now meet Daniel Ferris, 
in team high bid. It's a 340 model. Love the way it's laid out. Love the colors. Of course, triple power is the way to go with this boat for the most part. It's got a rear-facing bench seat you can see there. But Nortec is now offering a second row of seating that's forward-facing, similar to what they put in a lot of Nortec 390s, and it is going to become very popular for this 340. Nice to have this crew on board, their first event in the new boat, and we hope to see them again soon. And it's back with another catamaran now as we begin to close in on George Ariano from Ocala. It's one of his many DCBs. He owns uh, three or four of these, actually. He just sold one of them to one of our fellow club members on the run. This one's a 29-foot with some seriously big power, Mercury Racing 700s, and it is decked out to the max. But George tells me that when he's in his 29, it still has a big boat feel. You can look down and see it still has a large cockpit. There's enough room for five adults in this cockpit. Um, but when it's time to go fast, a little touch of that throttle, this boat is amazingly quick. And let's just take a moment to profile another one of our checkpoints. This one very popular on the course because it's very central on the course in the middle, uh, right here in Fort Walton Beach. This is Brooks Bridge Marina, and that is Brooks Bridge there bringing Highway 98 from the mainland over to Okaloosa Island. And while we look down and see most of the slips are empty right now, that's because a lot of these slips have been given to Florida Powerboat Club members who are staying here for the weekend. Uh, floating dock marina, not a big marina, uh, but they do clear out a lot of their commercial boats and uh, make it one of our checkpoints as now our FPC girl Lauren is handing off the card to uh, George and Carrie Olson's team here in their 42 foot fountain. And for those of you who are keeping track of what all the checkpoints are, this is the fifth in a series of seven and it pretty much ends the course at the East End or the Bay Area. And a very spirited team here, uh, Team Bent Marine, one of the 39 foot Nortex that Greg Bent brought over. Always a full and fun festive crew on these boats and a lot of bikinis. I just want to warn some of our viewers, it's just a little too crazy. We're, we're really on the ragged edge here with this Florida Powerboat Club stuff. You know, these people, they just cannot have enough fun. And uh, so we can be very dangerous to innocent bystanders who, you know, immediately fumble for their phones and start taking video. Once I saw a guy walk right into a piling uh, when he was taking pictures of some of the girls on the boat. So it can be very dangerous to be on these docks for those reasons alone. And of course, uh, a special thanks goes out to Team Bent Marine for all of that great entertainment they provided us. And we're now gonna fast forward to our next checkpoint. It's about 22 miles further west on the course on the Intracoastal. And uh, please notice, again, all protected waters and a beautiful sandy beach. This is what makes Juana's one of the most popular stops. And you may recall from a previous video that on the Friday, we made this our Friday fun run and there were a lot more boats on the beach. But I like the fact that we have changed our dates to focus on a powerboat friendly format and more of a VIP experience for our club members. And that has translated to a far less congested beach on any of the days. And I think that most of us have enjoyed that because nothing worse than not being able to get a spot on the beach to park your boat. And then when you come into Juana's and you can't get food or you got long lineups or long waits for food, this is all provided. This food is part of the poker run and it's all set up in advance. And there's John Paul in the water checking all this uh, high performance hardware. Uh, team Swanson and Team Duff, all three of the two skaters and a big cigarette. Pretty impressive show on this side of the dock, but just 15 feet away. Yes, indeed, it's our lovely Veronica, our FPC card girl here at Juana's. And I think the show here is about to get the attention of our video crew. And it just so happens, look, it's Team Bent Marine again. Well, that's okay with me, and I'm sure that's okay with all of you guys out there. But just showing you that it's a continued course and sometimes our camera crews just happen to be at the right place at the right time. Good job, guys. So for a lot of teams, uh, this will be just what we call a touch and go, uh, where you pull up to the dock and get your poker card and then back the boat away and continue on the course. Remember, Juana's is a lunch stop, but a lot of people visited here a day earlier, so many of them want to continue to Pensacola. Thanks to our lovely Veronica, her first time with the Florida Powerboat Club. And I know that I'm waiting for, like the rest of you guys, for a wardrobe malfunction to happen right about now, but it's time to get back in the chopper.
And it looks like Eric, Kristen, and the video crew are getting back up in the helicopter. And special thanks to Navarre Fire Rescue for giving us that cool parking spot for the helicopter right next door to Juanis. We land here every year, and it just gives us that little bit of advantage for the logistics and timing of our video shoot because we've got all the boats that are settled in down at Pensacola Beach and is our plan now to rendezvous with some of them as they make their way back onto the course and head eastbound. And pretty much to plan, just within moments, a helicopter team was able to pick up the first boat heading back to the east. This is Team Sweetwater Landing. It's a Mystic C4000, and we're starting to see more of these boats. It's actually a fairly new model, made its first run with the club back in February, its very first poker run. It was all silver back then. And since then, Brandon has wrapped the boat to promote his marina, which is in the Fort Myers area, Sweetwater Landing. Uh, but what I'd like to point out that I, what I really like to see here in this case is this family affair. Uh, they're boating on these poker runs, very much like the Fowler family who we saw in our last episode. Uh, they brought out their brand new Fountain Center console and Kyle Fowler being the registered member and attendee. And then he's got his mom and dad who join him on most of the poker runs. Well, in this case, it's Brandon who's the registered uh, owner and participant, but he's got his father, Glenn, and his mother, Kathy, along. And they do the poker runs together, and I think that's what's fantastic about uh, this family getting together and making these events a family affair to get away. And uh, really love seeing that. What a great way to bond. Kathy, you're a real trooper. Uh, but I do have to admit the comfort of this C4000, it's like sitting in your living room and just cruising all afternoon. So it's not so bad to be sitting in your own seat here with your hat on there. She gives us a little wave. <laughs> you can't see it, but she's got her phone out. She's doing social media right now. And it's another DCB cat. This one a little bigger than the two that you've seen previously. We saw a 33 and a 29 earlier. But this is the M35, a wildly popular model. Steven and Kelly Marino, along with their friends on board, they came from Alabama to join us. And they also sponsored the event with their insurance company called Alacomp. This 35 DCB powered by Mercury Racing 1100s. And that makes it all go. You push the throttles on this boat and you get up to 130 in absolutely no time. They're just taking their time and enjoying the helicopter. Remember now, if they hit the throttles, they would absolutely outrun the chopper right now. So nice for them to just kind of hang out, get some good photos and some time on camera. And as we pull up on this sensation, I realize that this event is full of surprises all the time. Uh, we are trying to identify this boat. It's got the decal number nine, which is registered to George Ariano for his 36 foot Warlock. Uh, but that is definitely not a Warlock and definitely not George Ariano because we just saw him earlier in his 29 foot DCB. So, well, we're just gonna leave it in here and uh, this team can thank George Ariano for the free poker run decal. And it looks like we've got a fountain here with quite a nice rooster tail coming out. This is Bill and Megan Wiles from Texas. 2007 model year, 38 fountain. Pair of Mercury Racing 600 SEIs, but listen to this. He's got some serious hardware. The ITS, Transom Assembly, Bravo XRs, Sportmaster lowers, uh, Mercury Maximus propellers. Top speed of this boat, 107 miles per hour. In their video bio, they said that they met some great people, they had a great time, and they're gonna be back for more. Well, I can prove that they did because just after this, they signed up for the Key West Poker Run in November. And here now is another team that uh, comes to this event quite often for as many years as I can remember. Jim and Lynn Archambault in their 43-foot outer limits. It's an SV43 model. Got deal more V10s for power. Well, they certainly have come a long way from about 15 years earlier when we first met them here on this event. They started with a Nordic 35 V-bottom. Uh, eventually went to a 42 Nordic when it came out. Had Mercury Racing 700s. 
uh, switched over to a center console, enjoyed a sensation for a while, and then found themselves back in this outer limits, going fast again, and this is one fast 43. And finally, our crew has reached the far reaches of the course, the West End now here at Pensacola Beach, and this is known as the Quiet Waters Beach Boardwalk. Beautiful sandy beach, lots of places to put the boats, and lots of places to go inside and eat. We've got three of them actually as lunch checkpoints here at this end of the course. One of them is Hemingway's, uh, which will be off to the right. Another one with Hooters inside the complex, and then over way over to the left, you can't really see it, is a new restaurant that we added. It's called the Flounders Chowder House. And what I really like about this location is there's plenty of dockage and a lot of places to just do what they're doing here with Joe Speckers and his crew, uh, jumping in the water and cooling off. And uh, you can do it out here at the dock or you could do it in on the beach, but really just a ideal setting. And if you're wondering why we would have three lunge checkpoints, well, of course, we're at the height of COVID now. We're in the middle of the summer and we've been on lockdown now for months. And the only way we could stage this event was if we were COVID compliant. And the way to do that was to have as many lunch stops as possible. And that's exactly what we did here at Pensacola Beach with the three different restaurants. And that kept the locations from becoming overcrowded. And while Jackie and I enjoyed lunch at Flounders, looks like Tyler and Max took my boat for a spin. Jeez. Actually, they were just finding a nice sandy location to anchor the boat so we could get on later. Type of look here. Yeah. Hey. Blast at the 2020 Emerald Coast Poker Run. <laughs> well, you can see by this shot that the numbers were clearly down uh, for the 2020 event. 70 registered teams altogether, but that made things much nicer for the many of us who don't like to raft uh, seven or eight deep. And it seems that we've got more teams coming in now. I think a lot of these teams are just going to do what we call the touch and go again, as we saw earlier in the show because they might have an alternative location where they've had lunch and they just don't want to tie all the boats up. So you can see they come in one by one. We've got our FPC girls down on the end of the dock uh, with a long pole handing out another voucher. And that would be the seventh voucher altogether. And the way that plays out is when you go to the party on Saturday night, you turn in seven vouchers and that'll give you seven cards for your very first poker hand, allowing you to pick the best five of those cards for your first hand. Of course, we'll have full coverage of that Saturday night party and the Poker Run gaming rules in our next episode. And as I see this lovely lady uh, reach out to get her card, I want to caution everybody, this is a safety precaution to never let your legs dangle over the side of the boat when you're pulling up to a fixed dock. And as we say goodbye to the Swanson team, now we say hi to the Bachelor team in their 23-foot Baja Outlaw. It was their very first time. I'm so glad this team made it. They told us in their video bio that they had an absolute blast. And seasoned pros here, Mark and Lana Albert from Texas in their 35-foot fountain team, Lickalonapus. You guys figure out the name. They have got this down to a science. They've done it so many times carefully pulls the boat up to the dock and she reaches without barely even looking and gracefully grabs that card. Thanks to Mark and Lana for being great supporters of this event year after year. You really got to love these shots. They made a lot of changes to this approach here. They put in some ferry boats here recently like a year or two ago so they brought in a new channel. Uh, you don't need to follow the channel to come into the dock here but it does make it a little more structured in terms of the entry and departure. Uh, closing in now here on Octavio and Karen Valdivia, who are from Georgia but have a home right here in Pensacola, enjoying their new boat, a Concept 4400, massive center console powered by quad Mercury 350 Verados, and a big change from that massive 52-foot outer limits that they have been bringing in the years prior. And it's another brand new center console for the Fowlers, this 38-foot fountain powered by triple Mercury 400Rs. And this is the other family I mentioned earlier. The Fowlers, uh, like the mares, make this a family affair. That's Kyle at the helm with uh, his dad, Mike, and mom, Lisa, uh, joining in for the fun. And another one of our regular teams on this event, Steve and Lisa Young from Alabama, not far from home, T 
Team Naughty Habit. First time we've seen this 38-foot statement here on the Emerald Coast Poker Run. They attended last year in their 35-foot fountain, said goodbye to that boat, and welcomed a new center console. And it's time for Roy and Amanda Jorgensen from Indiana to pull up to the dock in this big 50-foot hustler. Got to be on top of your game if you want to captain a boat like this, but they seem to have it down pat. Slow and steady keeps you out of trouble with a boat like this. And a quick shot of our other team from Indiana, Asa and Kelly Rainey, along with their friends Kevin and Karen Ellison. They're in this 2003 38-foot PowerQuest Avenger. They trailered 600 miles to join us. Well, we can see from these drone shots that looks like everybody is getting fired up after lunch and going to start heading back now eastbound on the course. It's about a 40-mile run, and with these beautiful conditions, you know, the rain has held off. And the weather is just perfect. This is going to be one hell of a nice ride. So let's get with Kevin and the rest of the teams and get fired up for the run back. And a very special welcome to John and Robin Kosker from Team Mystic Power Boats, Deland, Florida. Uh, their first time attending this Emerald Coast event with John's brand new Mystic 4200 center console. Custom paint, a beautiful interior, a very stylish center console. And thanks so much to Mystic for joining us this year. Uh, 2020 is the first year that Mystic has signed on as a Florida Power Boat Club series sponsor. And our drone giving us some excellent up close coverage and, and a really nice shot as you can look back off in the distance and see uh, that quiet waters beach boardwalk and then uh, chase mike and susan pascal on a new 41 foot cigarette nighthawk team coin operated um, first time for them on this event they just took delivery of the boat and what a beautiful job on this 41 powered by quad mercury racing 450s And a little bit of time here with the drone over top, keeping it real. That uh, 43 foot outer limits, Jim and Lynn Archambault, as Lynn puts on her safety vest, uh, getting ready for the ride. Just look at the size of the engine compartment on this boat. I think you could land the helicopter right on the back of this outer limits. Of course, as many of you are aware, a lot of these performance boats have a staggered engine setup, which puts the propellers very close together. Hence, the result is this amazing rooster tail as they hit the throttles and get on plane. And now a uh, cockpit close-up here with Brad Hancock and his Nortec 47. Notice that's a center helm position. Nortec offered that in at least two or three of their later V-bottom models. A nice shot of Steve and Lisa Young in their 38-foot statement. And in their video bio, they told us they are just loving this center console. Took delivery just after last year's Emerald Coast event and made their debut at the Key West Poker Run in November. And guys, if you want to win the Sexiest Crew Award, well, just follow their lead because this is what got them that prize. And one more time with the Rainies all the way from Indiana. 
Uh, big thumbs up to them for trailering so far, over 600 miles each way to join us. This is a 17-year-old PowerQuest 38, and it's in amazing condition. So uh, thanks for doing such a great job of looking after your equipment. Sorry about the salt water. And we have still got plenty more boats now getting up on plane and heading back for that 40 mile trek back to Destin because we got a big party tonight. The weather held out, it has just been a beautiful day and we are approaching that half hour mark for our show guys. So that means we are gonna sign off here of episode five and come back very soon with our sixth and final episode with feature coverage of this Emerald Coast Power Boat Week 2020 edition which was a COVID relief for so many of us here in late August. Uh, got us all out on the boats and enjoying our favorite pastime. Some horsepower in paradise with the Florida Power Boat Club. So stay tuned for episode six. We'll include some high speed aerials as we head back to Destin. Then of course, we've got that big Saturday night party where we awarded all of those coveted President's Choice Awards and played out dozens of poker hands to give away some big money and prizes to some lucky winners. And it all took place in a COVID friendly environment under the roof of the Destin Fort Walton Beach Convention Center, where we also got a chance to feature that Miss Powerboat Week contest with all these lovely ladies on board and helping our teams to play out their lucky poker hands. And even with our smaller event format, we still managed to make charity fundraising a top priority so we could leave some money in town for at least five local charities. But before we hit the road to go home, we still got a lot of teams up for some Sunday fun as we put the helicopter back up for some scenic aerials offshore in those beautiful Gulf Coastal waters. So keep watching guys and thanks to all of our loyal viewers to help us get to that magic number. We just tipped the charts at over 30,000 YouTube subscribers here on the Florida Powerboat Club channel and we only could have done that with you guys. So stay with us. Remember, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and always click that notification bell so you'll get all the updates every time a new episode is released. Our 2021 season is just around the corner, so be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events in 2021, as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page. And you guys know who you are. And I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching, guys, uh, from our FPC studios in Pompano Beach. This is Stu Jones, along with our producer, Ryan McCoy. And please remember, guys, if you're out boating during the holiday season, remember that the Florida waterways are extremely congested this time of year. So be safe, wear your life jacket when the time is right, and most of all, be respectful to your fellow boaters. Happy holidays from the Florida Powerboat Club. Bye for now, guys.